Climate change is one of the greatest problems society has ever faced, with increasingly severe consequences for humanity as natural disasters multiply, sea levels rise, and ecosystems falter. Addressing climate change involves both mitigation, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and adaptation, preparing for the consequences we can't avoid. In recent years, machine learning has been recognized as a broadly powerful tool for technological progress across society, and it can be a valuable tool in fighting climate change. A year ago, a team of us wrote a paper called Tackling Climate Change with Machine Learning to frame how machine learning can be part of global efforts against climate change in areas like electricity systems, transportation, buildings, and agriculture. The paper was a call for collaboration between people with complementary expertise and was meant to be a guide for what specific problems are and aren't impactful, as well as how to go about having an impact. That paper grew into the Climate Change AI initiative and community. Today, we wanted to give you a very brief overview of some of the opportunities that exist for leveraging machine learning in climate change mitigation and adaptation. The full paper is freely available online, and I encourage you to read more if you are curious. Now I'll hand it over to the authors of the individual sections of our paper. Electricity systems cause about a quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions and are an important backbone for many decarbonization strategies in areas such as buildings, transportation, and industry. Greening the power grid will require quickly transitioning to low carbon electricity sources, such as solar, wind, and nuclear, and also making the grid more efficient in the meantime. Machine learning can help in a variety of ways, such as forecasting solar, wind, and emissions, helping more effectively optimize power systems, detecting methane leaks by analyzing sensors and satellite imagery, enabling predictive maintenance, and accelerating the development of new technologies such as nuclear fusion and next generation batteries. Work in this area should especially consider integrating existing knowledge such as the physics behind power systems into machine learning methods in order to ensure that these methods are effective and robust. Transportation accounts for about a quarter of energy-related CO2 emissions, and it's one of the sectors that is slowest to decarbonize. Generally, there are four approaches to reducing greenhouse gas emissions from transport. First, one can reduce the transport activity. Second, one can improve vehicle efficiency. Third, one can use alternative fuels or electrified transport. And fourth, one can shift passengers and freight to lower carbon options like rail. Machine learning can play a role for all four of these strategies. For example, machine learning can help with basic research to design better batteries to use on electric vehicles. Machine learning can also be used to optimize complex transport systems. This includes not only public transit, but also freight systems. And new technological developments in transportation are also driven by machine learning, such as autonomous vehicles. But here the climate impact is rather uncertain and those technologies might even increase emissions. The energy use in our everyday lives in cities needs to be drastically reduced to mitigate climate change. Take the example of buildings. There are our daily shelters and places where we use energy for important services, such as maintaining a comfortable temperature across seasons. But a tremendous amount of energy is lost along the way in all heating systems or escapes through poorly insulated walls. We need to improve millions of buildings, very fast, but luckily there are existing and feasible solutions. In the building sector, machine learning can help fill data gaps to inform decarbonization strategies, for example, using satellite imagery. Machine learning can also be part of technical solutions, for example, by controlling efficient heating and cooling systems. But a strong interface between local governments, researchers, industries and citizens will be key to deploy successful solutions. There's considerable potential for ML to reduce emissions across industry, as long as it's applied toward a clear objective function. Applications include global supply chains and logistics, materials processing and production, and manufacturing goods. For supply chains, ML can provide better supply and demand predictions to reduce overproduction, as well as help buyers identify the cleanest options and reduce waste through optimized transportation routes and better refrigeration for perishables. 
for materials, note that cement and steel production account for over 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. ML can speed up the discovery of new replacement materials and help design buildings or products that use fewer resources. Finally, ML can streamline energy consumption for manufacturing by optimizing factory processes, improving heating and cooling efficiency, and maximizing renewable electricity use. Applications of ML in industry are possible only as long as firms' economic incentives align with greenhouse gas reduction, since rehauling proven products and processes is expensive. Through plant photosynthesis, our planet has been capturing carbon on the various forms for billions of years. Sadly, our current economy encourages practices freeing this carbon at unprecedented rates. Machine learning is currently playing an important role in monitoring deforestation. It can also quantify how much biomass is being gained or lost at a planetary scale. With advances in hyperspectral cameras, we can now detect the various greenhouse gases from satellite in real time. The increasing resolution helps us track emissions at the source and enable immediate actions such as flaring of methane. Machine learning also plays a central role in precision agriculture, which can increase yield and could in turn reduce the need of deforestation. It can also facilitate regenerative agriculture to increase soil carbon content and make better usage of fertilizer to reduce emission of nitrous oxides. However, we have to be mindful that for these opportunities to have impact at scale, proper regulation still need to be put in place and systemic change needs to happen. Otherwise, this increased yield could simply turn into more food waste. Stabilizing global temperatures will probably require net negative greenhouse gas emissions before the end of the century. This means we will probably need ways of taking past emissions, particularly carbon dioxide, out of the atmosphere. As we heard earlier, agricultural and land use practices can help here, but one of the most scalable ways to do this is through chemical processes for atmospheric carbon dioxide removal, sequestering the resulting carbon dioxide in subsurface geologic formations. Developing and advancing these technologies will require a lot of basic science and engineering, but machine learning can also help. In particular, machine learning can help accelerate discovery of new materials that might be most useful for negative emissions technologies. In addition, machine learning can help speed up modeling of relevant complex systems, such as subsurface sequestration reservoirs, to help us find the best places to put carbon dioxide and make sure it stays in the ground. Machine learning has the potential to greatly enhance our ability to predict how climate change will alter the Earth. Current climate models are limited by their computational complexity and expense. This makes it difficult to do things like forecast local, high-resolution climate risks. With recent advances in machine learning, however, it's possible to enhance these models. For example, by identifying storms and cold fronts in climate data sets, by making better use of multi-model climate ensembles, or by integrating remote sensing data with existing physics-based models. These changes have the potential to make climate predictions that are faster and more actionable. However, making them well will require that climate scientists and machine learning experts closely collaborate. Machine learning can support societal robustness and resilience to climate change. Imagine, if you could monitor an ecosystem at high resolution, then you would be in an ideal situation to conserve it. Every day, there are data flowing in from camera traps and satellites that can help us track species loss and deforestation. You can look at a time lapse of a forest and determine not only which areas have disappeared, you can attribute the loss to specific factors like land use change or commodity crops. Next, consider human health. Climate change will increase the severity of heat waves, the frequency of droughts, and the strength of storms. But again, machine learning can shape a kind of situational awareness. There are now sensor networks that can be used to find urban heat islands. There are now data from food supply chains that can isolate the weakest links. If you work together with the experts who are designing these systems, you can help guide action that supports societal adaptation. For individuals who are concerned about climate change, machine learning can empower them to understand and effectively reduce their carbon footprint. 
Machine learning and natural language processing can help identify the emissions cost of an individual's uh, consumer choices. Counterfactual reasoning can then be applied to that model to help identify how much emissions would be reduced by changing each behavior. By predicting the marginal emissions cost of household energy consumption in real time, machine learning and reinforcement learning can automatically schedule household appliances when the emissions will be lowest. And machine learning can help raise awareness and concern about climate change by systematically identifying not only which interventions will be the most effective, but even through creating new interventions using enhanced visualizations created with generative models. And the cool thing is that behavior change programs can be incredibly cost effective, costing as little as three cents to save a kilowatt hour of electricity, whereas generating one kilowatt hour can cost five to ten cents with a coal, wind or solar plant. So system solutions are going to be important, but individual action can play a piece of the puzzle as well. As Nelson Mandela said, and I quote, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Access to quality education is a key part of sustainable development, contributing to improving the quality of life. There are two angles for seeing the intersection of education, machine learning, and climate change. Using machine learning to improve education and improving climate change education more broadly. On the one hand, machine learning can contribute to education and teaching by improving access to educational opportunities, helping personalize the teaching process, and stepping in when teachers have limited time. On the other hand, education centered on climate change can enable individuals to make climate-friendly lifestyle choices, such as reducing their energy use. As climate change itself may diminish educational outcomes due to its negative effects on agricultural productivity and household income, providing high quality educational interventions globally is all the more important and machine learning has a key role to play in this effort. Public policies are a really important pillar of collective action towards mitigating and adapting to climate change. Think of the energy transition, changes in company strategies, changes in customer behaviors. All these are large societal changes. So policymakers need to make timely decisions about incentives and regulation that can help foster these changes. But the outcome of such policies are uncertain, and this contributes to make them look risky. So to support policymaking, the field of policy analysis that builds on broader fields such as economics or social sciences aims to inform the design of policies with data-driven insights, theories, and scenarios. Machine learning can contribute to this effort by evaluating the causal outcomes of policies, advancing models of social interactions, or providing prediction tools to better design carbon markets. In the coming decades, the impact of climate change on the global stock market is predicted to be in the trillions of dollars. Climate investment is the current dominant approach to climate finance, and it involves investing money in low carbon assets, creating green financial indices that focus on low carbon energy and clean technologies. A complementary approach is climate analytics, which aims to predict the financial effects of climate change by analyzing investment portfolios, funds, and companies themselves. This is truly important to forecast where, how, or when climate change will impact the stock price of a given company or the debt of an entire nation. Machine learning plays a central role in both of these approaches with techniques like natural language processing that can be used to identify direct and indirect climate risk exposure in annual company reports and time series analysis that can be used to improve existing traditional portfolio optimization approaches. These are just some of the many ways machine learning can be impactful in tackling climate change. I hope that this has given you a sense of the many opportunities that exist, from forecasting to optimizing complicated systems, from gathering data for more informed decision making, to accelerating the process of scientific experimentation itself. To close, however, I want to leave you by emphasizing that machine learning is not a silver bullet. It is one powerful tool that needs to be used in conjunction with other tools. Machine learning is not useful for every aspect of fighting climate change. If misapplied, it can be overkill, irrelevant, or even actively counterproductive. That's one reason partnership is vitally important. Bringing together researchers, industry, policymakers, and communities. Partnership is needed to make sure the right problems get solved, that positive and negative impacts are assessed correctly, and that good work can have the greatest impact. 
And that's why I'm so excited to see everyone here today from different countries, sectors, and areas of expertise, because we will all need to work together.